Welcome to the shooting show. This week we head to the Highlands for some duck flighting Glenetive style. Plus we bring you all the latest news from the shooting world. Who says you have to be on the foreshore to have a true wildfowling experience? We're in Glenetiv for a spot of wild duck flighting and this is as remote as it gets. The keeping team has done its job and kept the pond well fed, but there are no guarantees when it comes to duck. We could easily draw a blank if our quarry decides not to fly or to go elsewhere. Whatever the outcome of tonight's shoot, we know we're privileged to be out once again in this part of the world. And the Spaniel's having a good time too. With the feeding done, we start counting the hours until dusk. Jobs are good. Our team of guns is full of shooting show regulars. There's the other car twin, Sean, looking in fit and fighting shape. James Falkard and Andy Powell are with us too. The time has come to head for the hide. We've packed an unusually still evening, which is more or less the opposite of perfect conditions. Still, the guns one and all are enthusiastic for what's to come. Right, time so for the briefing. I'm pretty sure the ducks are coming from the loft. Um, not much wind, so I'm sure it's really going land in. Whoever's going to be at the bottom here, they're obviously going to come over. Don't blue wrap them straight away, you know. Let a few come through so everybody gets a shot. There is a butt just at the bottom of the bank here. And there's a few teal wind coming into it, my lord as well, so I'm sure we'll see something new. So. How are you going to decide on butts? Um, butts, pretty much you can choose between yourselves, I think. They're all going to be, if the ducks come in, they're all going to be productive. Yeah. 
Um, so I've been feeding them on the far bank and on the bank in here. So I say it's just a case of whoever is in the butt that they come over first, just let a few past you, you know, so the other guys get a shot behind. Let a few come in. If you start coming in in twos or that, let a couple, let a couple of pairs come in, you know. And then don't shoot at the first two. Hi, it's always sky blinded up. I'm not seeing any, any people or any ground, just sky. Cool. Okay, good, thanks, Lynn. Good thing. As we get into position, the early signs are promising. We send the cameraman into the hide with Andy Powell. Last time we saw him on the show, he was grassing his first red stag. How will he fare with the switch from rifle to shotgun? As the light fades, all is silent. We ask Andy what he's expecting from the next few hours. Well, this evening I've come out um, with duck shooting here at Glen Etty. I've been fortunate to uh, try out this new Lincoln. I've let my uh, normal wife, uh, shock and apologise to uh, my friend. Uh, put it up in the shoulder to try dry mount, and she came up really nice. I mean, I've seen the old Lincolns, and I mean, it's got a nice, quite a nice good fore end to it. Single trigger, which is nice, and it's got 30 inch barrels, I think, on this one. I'm used to a little bit shorter, but it comes up nice. Uh, it's got quite a nice top rail to it. Hopefully, I'll be able to knock down a couple of ducks and uh, give it a go. I'm using the new uh, Ely Bismuth. Uh, again, I've not really used them yet, so it'll be interesting to see. It'll be uh, hopefully the ducks we've been told will be coming in early, but again, you know what wild ducks are like. Some nights they're there, some nights they're not. So, fingers crossed, I could put the new Lincoln to practice and also chuck in a few Ely's with it and see what the combination makes. So far, the still conditions seem to be our undoing, as we haven't seen a single duck in flight. But there's plenty of time yet. Then, catching us by surprise, our first customers of the night appear out of the darkness. That's one down. Yep. Andy is the first one to get a shot in, and he hopes some sport will head the way of the other guns before long. It takes quite some time, but eventually we get another chance. Uh, I think there's been about nine come in so far. Uh, first bunch that flew to our left, a mallard. A uh, group of five flew over the, uh, the butt there. And then a group came back in, um, several shots as you hear. 
Um, not sure really who can honestly claim the one that's dropped at the back. Um, and a pair of teals has come in. Uh, again, nothing dropped out of that one. Uh, coming in using the the actual sort of um, mountain side there as a, a route in, so it's actually making them a little bit trickier to to pick up. Just as we're about to lose filming light, it looks like Andy might be in the look again. Some of the ducks made it through the salvo and landed on the pond. All we have to do is to wait for them to lift off again or to bring some others in. A good shot from Andy finishes off the evening. OK, no problem, Luke. Luke? Luke? Yeah. Um, I don't know what Sean's got down behind him, but mine, the last one I shot, is directly in line with this, with that tallest pole. Is that the one that came down in the corner? Yeah. Then I've got one at the back. Yeah. Somewhere near that fence. It's either this side of it or not. Andy's been lucky to have had the lion's share of the sport. He catches up with Sean, who wasn't quite so fortunate. The first five came, came in behind us because I said, I said, still, I said, look at this lot. I could, hear, I could hear them coming in behind They me. came right over the top of you. Yeah, well, they, well, they went round over the lot. Then they come back, didn't they? But then next they behind back. you, they were straight on the top of me. Like, yeah. To be honest, it was, it's that, where I am now, you're looking right at that hill. Yeah, so well, we were lucky, like you said, with that, that gives us a bit of an advantage for filming. Not for too many bucks. That's good. You are set the right gun anyway. Hmm. See if Rolly can find him, huh? If he's... Roll, find him! Go on, find him! Where's he going? Where's he going? Where's he going? Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. One duck retrieved. Excellent. It's hard work in the dark, but picking the birds is the most important task of all. So what was back then, Frey? You don't get any bothered. There's one in, no I didn't. There's one in. I think there's at least four or five down. Yeah, oh, he's picked it. He's picked the one with the fence, yeah. Oh, brilliant. There's one, there's one in the drink. Yep. How do you get on, Sean? Zero. Moon seat then. Yeah. I picked that one. Wait, the one that I had go that way. Oh, the one you had to go that way. It got out of the fence. Yeah, the one I had to go. I think it was gotten it straight away. Gone miles away and come back with a different one. Wait, oh, excellent. Good boy. Good boy. Good lad, come on, yeah. So what do we pick there? Uh, five. five. Five mile odd, yeah. Yeah. Hectic but short. Aye, that was it. They all seem to come and come and go really quick, but I was expecting to see more ducks to be honest, but it is what it is. What can you do? Yeah, it's wild duck flighting, you know. There's not a lot of wind either. Which um, no, that's really it, happen, the conditions so. aren't perfect, so but no, I think a few shots got off and a few ducks were picked, so perfect it is.
Wild duck shooting isn't about amassing a huge bag. Even if you don't fire a single shot, there's something special about being in these surroundings. It's been another excellent night of sport in the Highlands. Some difficult duck flighting the Glenetive way there. And now, the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. A consultation on tightening air gun laws in England and Wales is now open. Intended to be a wide-ranging review into whether the law is fit for purpose, the consultation specifically asks for evidence from Scotland and Northern Ireland where air guns are already licensed. Basque said it will submit a robust response that reminds the government there is already plenty of good law to deal with those who abuse air guns. You can make your views known by emailing the address on screen. Speaking of air guns, the Ultimate Air Gun Handbook is on sale now from the team behind Air Gun Shooter magazine. Across five themed sections, it's full of expert tips and techniques for choosing the right air gun, looking after your gear and hitting the target more consistently. With target shooting, hunting and plinking all covered, it's the perfect book for air gun lovers with all levels of experience. Get a copy now from myfavouritemagazines.co.uk England's Commonwealth shooting team has been announced. Leading the line in the shotgun events is Steve Scott, who will try to win a Commonwealth medal for a third games in a row. Aaron Heading, Ed Ling, Rachel Parrish, Matt French and Abby Ling are all on the team too. On the rifle side, Ken Parr carries British hopes, while Christian Callaghan will attempt to better his 2014 bronze in the pistol disciplines. Head to the link on screen to see all the team members. And finally, a county council has banned snares without consulting anyone or even receiving any complaints about their use. West Sussex County Council has prohibited snaring on its land and admitted it didn't consider any evidence before doing so. Basque's Ian Grindy reminded the council that snares are an important tool for the legal and humane control of pest species such as foxes and said that they had not followed due diligence or the regulator's code. That was the Shooting Show News. Well that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you. This has been... The Shooting Show.